Force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. This box has that power too. What's up everybody? It's me, Andrew Fantasia, and welcome to Digital Charcuterie, here as we take another look at Marvel United in one of our now classic, I'm sure, Marvel United deep dives. Off the top as usual, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and click the bell to get notified, and click on my face, or no, don't click on my face, click on the link that I'm going to put in the description below to Amazon, where you can pick up a copy of my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards. Right now, they're only available on Amazon. Hopefully one day soon that'll change and you can pick them up at Barnes & Noble or Indigo or something. But right now, We Were Wizards is only available there. The link's in the description below. This is my fantasy novel. It's got wizards. It's got swords. One of the characters has a boomerang that can cut people. There's drama. There's humor. There's adventure, which is very important to me. Lots of good stuff. This one here, Seekers of the Stones, this is the first one you should read. And then you can read Ghosts of Wizards Past. There's little blurbs at the back. I'm going to hold these blurbs up and so you can maybe pause it and see if this is something you might be into. But I promise, if you're into elves and magic swords and talking trees and bows and arrows, you're going to find something to love in We Were Wizards. Link to that in the description below. Okay, hopefully Domino's presence can give me a little bit of luck and I can sell some books today. But Domino is only one member of the X-Force, and that's the box we're looking at today. So let's take a peek. Let's get the table, open up that X-Force box, see what contents reside within said box, and then come back here and talk about how many points of worthiness we assign it with our patented digital charcuterie points of worthiness system. Let's take a look. All right, here we go with our deep dive into the X-Force expansion. If you are thinking of what to get and maybe you are, you know, a Luke Skywalker type person and you're like, I really want to know if I should use the Force. Well, let's see if this is the right amount of Force for you. I'm going to take off the lid. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to take off the lid because I forgot to show you the back of the box. There is the back of the box. I will read from that uh, inside because there is one of those inside. Uh, but you take a look and you see everything. That comes in the X-Force box. Uh, I will be honest, when I was getting my pledge that came with Season 1 and Season 2, because I got them both as one thing, the X-Force box was the least... It was the box I was the least excited for. Um, so much so that I, I planned ahead and I was like, I know that's going to be the first box I open because I always open the one that has me the least excited and when I think back on it now, like, it's still a great box, all things considered. So the fact that this was the one that had me the least excited, that's that's just attesting the quality of Marvel United. So here is our rules leaflets, which we will quickly read from here, because that's how I roll. First of all, welcome to the Strike Force. I guess that's why they're called X-Force, because they are a Strike Force. But what does it say about them? Created by Cable out of the remnants of the New Mutants, who we don't quite have all of yet, if I'm mistaken, the new mutants in Marvel United. But anyway, the X-Force is unlike other X-Men teams who focus on reacting to villain schemes and protecting innocence. Following Cable's philosophy of get them before they get you, the X-Force is an aggressive team who actively attacks evil mutants every chance they get. Pooling together the powers of an eclectic group of mutants, they can deal with any challenge that comes their way. United, they are a true force to be reckoned with. Ah, force! See what they did there? So, if we flip over... This leaflet, ta-da, it tells you what you get and what you get and who gave it to you. <laughs> and that's going to be put aside for now so that we can take this out. Inside you will find one, two, three, four locations. And what are those locations? Well, you've got Strife's secret base. And I think this is our first instance where we have a hazardous location because it's got that sign that says, whoa, hazard. And it has a black end of turn effect, which is bad. And it means you must do something. It's not like the gray ones where you may do stuff. Uh, and that's Strife Secret Base. So that's why it's bad. Uh, after that, we've got the, I've always been iffy on how to pronounce this because I'm not from the USA, but I think that's the Adirondack Mountains, I think. Uh, at first, I thought it was a Dirondack, but 
I think that sounds too much like Diamondback, which is a snake, and I don't think they want it to be known as Snake Mountain, so I think it's Adirondack, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the Morlock Tunnels, which are very annoying. I hate the Morlock Tunnels. Also a hazardous location. And another one, Murder World, also very annoying. Uh, very annoying level in Marvel Ultimate Alliance, if anybody remembers that game. Um, and there you have it. Four locations to choose from in the box, followed by your villain of the box, who is Strife, who I was not familiar with before Marvel United. Apparently he's a evil clone of Cable. Uh, and there's a lot of clones of people running around. Uh, he's a little simple. He doesn't have any special setup rules. But he was allegedly the main big bad in what was called the Executioner's Song, which was a big giant X-Men event that involved Cable and a bunch of X-Force characters. Uh, but strangely enough, did not involve the character Executioner. So go figure. Uh, <laughs> there's all his information there if you want to take a look. And inside, we've got the cards of all our heroes and villains. So here we have the heroes of X-Force. If we flip it over to the back, we will see that we have Shatterstar, who might have the coolest costume. I'm not, you know, I'm going to take that back. He doesn't might have the coolest costume. He does have the coolest costume in this box. Look at that. He's like a cyborg ninja. Shatterstar is really cool. And I think he's also some kind of clone of, of Cable or something, because he's got the same thing with his eye. He's something Cable adjacent. That's all I know for sure. This part of the X-Men universe is completely a mystery to me. Uh, followed by Cannonball, who uh, is about to head off on a race across the country with Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise. hey -oh! But that's Cannonball's card. I love his little pilot goggles. All right. Take a look at Cannonball. And then there's the man of the hour himself, Cable who uh, I'm going to lose some brownie points for saying this, but I have never liked Cable. In fact, I have actively disliked Cable. Uh, I read the whole run of Cable and Deadpool comics from, I think, 2007. It was the first time I've ever read a whole run of comics in its entirety, in fact. And he's just such a annoying know-it-all where no matter what happens, he's like, I knew that would happen because I'm from the future and I know everything, blah, blah, blah. I'm so powerful. And I'm just like, I don't like you, sir. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, especially when he's in the same book as Deadpool, who is more entertaining. Uh, it really, they really made him hard to love. But I know a lot of people love Cable, so great. All the power to you. And there's Domino, who um, back in the day getting trading cards with my dad, I remember getting a Domino card specifically and my dad saying, hey, that's a cool looking card. I like this Domino person. And I thought they did her really well in the Deadpool 2 movie. And her cards are a lot of fun. And the colors of them are great, too. So those are the hero cards. Yeah, sorry, I am not a Cable fan at all. He was fun in the cartoon. Uh, but in the comics, man, he was insufferable. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to drop that there. And then I'm going to pick up these right here, which is Strife. Those are Strife's cards. That's his villain deck. And I'll just quickly, breezily take you through his villain deck, because villain decks, you know, aren't visually all that striking. But there you go. you got a villain deck for Strife. Um, it's funny. The X-Force always reminds me of... Uh, there was a commercial back in the 90s days for those Toy Biz action figures. And uh, the, the jingle for that was X marks the spot, X-Men. I don't know if anybody remembers that jingle, but that was the jingle for the uh, the X-Force action figures. Uh, X marks the spot, apparently. That's what they would say. X marks the spot. X Extraordinary, exceptional X-Men. Wolverine's got a tiger twist, stripes and spring out claws. The X-Men comes on his ice board with color change icicles. These aren't ordinary men. They're X-Men. Okay, time to talk about my favorite miniatures. Well, my least favorite to my favorite miniatures in the box. And even though she's my favorite character in the box, my least favorite miniature is definitely Domino. Just because the other ones are pretty cool. They're great miniatures. Uh, so there she is. She's standing on... Almost looks like a, a battle droid head from Star Wars, but it's looks... I think it's more like a sentinel foot or just the foot of a robot or something. There's all kinds of robot-y stuff under her. And she's just there looking cool with her pistols. She's like, don't mess with me. I'm lucky. I'm luckier than you are. 
Um, I could use some of that luck domino. In fact, if, uh, if I can channel some of your powers, that would be pretty nice. But there she is. They nailed her eye thing, which I think is the key to getting domino. It's hard to see, but her eye thing is there. And they did a good job with it. So that's that. Let me move that up a bit and change the light just a tad so we have some better lighting here. Um, my next favorite one in this box is probably going to be... Oh, these are great minis, all of them. It's probably going to be Cannonball. Actually, you know what? I lied. No, he's too good. <laughs> he's too good of a figure. Let's, let's go back to Cable. Cable just looks great. The giant gun that he is known for, plus like a little machete. I mean, that is Cable right there. You show me that silhouette and that whatever the hell that is, those giant chunky shotgun shells, I guess, that he keeps on his shoulder. You show me just the silhouette of this and I know right away, oh, that's Cable. That's the guy who's always talking about how he knows everything all the time. <laughs> that's him. And Cable knew that I was going to pick him up next because he knows everything, right, Cable? Yes, and I knew you were going to say that too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's him in a nutshell, uh, based off what I read. So yeah, there's his giant, giant gun. And yeah, lots of fun. All right. There's, you know what? The best I've ever seen Cable done is in X-Men 97. They really stepped up their game and made Cable fun. Uh, after Cable, man, it's tough to choose because these are all great miniatures, but I'll go with Shatterstar. I love the two. He's got, are they a Daito and a Shoto? No, he's, they're, they're both the same size. So he's just got these, these two uh, swords there. He's got his crazy headband and his giant ponytail. Look how dynamic that is. My goodness, uh, that's that's an action figure right there. I don't even remember this guy from the cartoon. I don't remember, he, he must have showed up once or twice, but as a kid, I would have loved his action figure because he's just so unique looking with the white cloak and the two swords and whatever these braids are. Like, there's nobody else who looks quite like him. And next, we will go with Strife. Strife is pretty cool. He's got... It's literally, it's funny that he's Cable's clone because his thing on his head looks a lot like Wolverine. If you were to show me this guy with no context and say he's an evil clone of an X-Men character, my first guess would be, oh, he's Wolverine's evil clone. Because look at this, that looks exactly like what Wolverine wears. But no, he's Cable's clone, which means he probably knows everything too, which must have been an interesting fight between those guys because it's like, would have just been them saying, I knew that. Oh yeah, I knew that. Like that Rick and Morty episode about the heist. Uh, what I love about Strife is he's covered with spikes. From the back, he kind of looks like the Tower of Sauron. Very, very beautiful, large, heavy figure. This guy cuts an imposing figure. He must have been uh, a big deal in that comic book story. Like, dealing with him must have been pretty, pretty special. I wonder how they defeated Strife, because he's supposed to be pretty powerful. Uh, maybe they tricked him uh, with, with fool, foolish trickery. Maybe they... Maybe they challenged him to a game of tic-tac-toe and he lost. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to go with uh, Cannonball as my favorite because that smoke effect is so spiky, first of all, that it actually can hurt your hand if you touch it. Please do not leave him lying around on a carpet because if you step on Cannonball, you are going to the ER. There's no question about it. But look how fun that is. His feet are not even in the picture because they've just been swallowed up by this immense cloud of boom. Um... But that's great. That's just a ton of fun. Definitely one of the most uh, impressive boxes just in terms of what the miniatures have to offer. And lastly, the box comes with another challenge. These are always fun. And this one is the Hazardous Locations Challenge. So for the setup, you just simply include any three hazardous locations in the game and then they must apply the return effect. So it's a really simple challenge. It's not one of the best ones, but it's just a fun way to step up the game and make it harder. If you draw this challenge, you have to include three hazardous locations. So there you go. An extra little challenge for you, for anybody who wants to make Marvel United more difficult than it already is. So now it's time to put everything back where it was. And as you know by now, I do not mess around with my boxes. I mix and match stuff depending on uh, what I need storage wise. And there is a lot of stuff that I put in here because as you can see, there's a whole well that's not even being used. Uh, and I'm not one to let that go to waste. So first of all, I have two more villains who go 
in here, uh, and they are Spiral and Mojo. Uh, and I put them here just because the Mojo corner of the X-Men universe, I've always, in my head, associated with X-Force, even though I don't think the comics ever put them together in any meaningful way. That's just always been in my brain. So just to make that make sense in my head, I keep Mojo and Spiral in here. So here are their cards. If you want to take a look at Mojo and Spiral, their miniatures, of course, are in the Mutant Promos box, which we will get to at the end of our Season 2 look. But they are very, very fun villains. And we were talking last week about how when I play randomly, Marvel Girl was the last hero I ended up drawing the name of. So she was the last hero I, I played as. I tried everybody else. Spiral was the last villain. I finally got to play Spiral. I think it was like the day before season three came. But literally I was waiting and waiting because her, her villain fight looked like so much fun. And I just never drew her name. And then I finally did. And... Spiral was indeed a lot of fun. So I'm going to put Mojo and Spiral in there underneath Strife. I'm also going to add some more heroes to the mix. I'm going to add Spiral's hero deck because keep Spiral together makes sense. So all of her cards are in one box. So Spiral's hero deck is here. Um, then I also added Dazzler and Longshot because... Again, I just kind of associate all these characters together. I associate Longshot with Mojo, because he comes from the Mojoverse, like Spiral does. And I think Dazzler and Longshot were together in the comics at one point. I think they were lovers or whatever. So, And their cards are both gold, too. So I really... That's my reasoning. My very weak, flimsy reasoning that makes total sense in my brain for putting these guys all in here. But look how nice. And I still have room for another hero. So... I think what I might do is if I ever get Witching Hour, maybe I'll put X-Force Deadpool's cards in here. I don't know. We'll see. I can always mix and match things. So then I will take the villain dashboards for Spiral. She's got those great, great dashboard things with the magic spell, which was so much fun. And Mojo as well. Look how nice those da Those are like two of the best looking villain dashboards in all of Marvel United as far as I'm concerned. So nice. Uh, Mojo was really tough, too. So I'm just going to take those and put them underneath Strife and add those to the box. I also, there's more that I put in here, as I also keep a location from X-Men Blue Team. And you'll see why as soon as I flip it over, because it's the Mojoverse. Um, and I think you you are encouraged to use Mojoverse when you face off against Mojo. It's not necessary but it makes the game a little bit easier. So just to make my life easier, I keep the Mojoverse location in here with Mojo himself. And that's the ball game. X marks the spot indeed. You have just seen X-Force. Now let's talk about how many points of worthiness we can give to this expansion. Not bad at all. Now let's get those points a rolling and calculate the worthiness of this thing. Let's do it. The X-Force expansion is pretty simple. It comes with five miniatures. There's a nice five points. Four of those miniatures are the delectable X-Force heroes themselves, so we get four points for that. Villains are worth two points each, and guess what? Strife is our only villain. There's one in the box. We have four locations at half a point each. That rounds out to two points. And finally, We've got a challenge, the Hazardous Locations Challenge, which comes in the box. That's worth a nice crisp one point as well. 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 equals 14 points of worthiness. Okay, not too shabby. Puts it pretty much on par with the Season 1 expansions. So, we are off to a pretty decent start. Already we're starting to see just the sheer variety that the X-Men expansions have to offer, because first class was very different. This feels more like what we're used to from season one. Next week, we're gonna get very, very different, because we are going to crack open the thick, chunky mama that is Days of Future Past. That's coming next week 
here on the Digital Charcuterie Marvel United Deep Dives. Until then, I've been Andrew Fantasia. You've been awesome. Join me here again as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you then.